so you can calculate V as uh, 2 pi by now this one is always free space wavelength a root of n 1 square minus n 2 square. So, what is the V at 1300 did you calculate? Thirteen hundred is two point three two three and fifteen fifty is one point nine four eight five. Okay. So are they single moded or multi moded? Both are less than two point four, so it is a single mode for both thirteen hundred and fifteen fifty nanometer. And as I said last time, this N1 and N2 are the typical uh, differences that you will see in a commercial standard step index uh, fiber. We also want to know what is a mode field diameter. And you know, uh, last time we discussed that uh, the fundamental mode, even though it was represented as J0 U R over A, even though it gets represented this way you could very well approximate it as a Gaussian right? and the it is 1 by E width you calculate and twice of that 1 by E width is what you call as a mode field diameter. So, if you do this for different V numbers, uh, different lambdas are characterized by different effective indices, different V numbers. If you calculate this um, the fundamental modal profile which is J naught U R by A and, and we said this U is dependent on your effective index of the mode right, which we are calculating from our B parameter. Okay. So, if you uh, go ahead and calculate this for different uh, values of lambda which means in fact lambda is not u the unique uh, parameter that can change. I mean you can change when your effective index changes, effective index changes can happen either when n 1 and n 2 change or when a changes or when lambda changes. So, that is why we calculate it in terms of uh, v parameter. So, whenever v changes if you keep plotting that Gaussian and you keep recording uh, you keep plotting the j naught the Bessel function the 0th order Bessel function approximate it as Gaussian every time you do a Gaussian fit every time and you find out what is the uh, 1 by e width of that Gaussian. <laughs> It turns out that this W by A is given by this empirical relation and this empirical relation is uh, Marcuse's empirical relation. It is very useful for an en in the engineering perspective because as an engineer now you really do not have to go through this tedious process of solving finding B and finding the Bessel function and so on. If you know that your fiber is single moded and if you want to know what is the uh, spread of that mode, how big that mode is, all what you want to do is uh, use this relation. So, that way this relation is useful for a uh, in the in the uh, in a practical perspective when you are on the field. When you change the lambda you want to know how the mode, the mode would the mode become bigger, would the mode become smaller, would that Gaussian looks look bigger or smaller. And why are we concerned about the shape of the Gaussian, whether the Gaussian is, so it simply means that when you have a core, you have or, or if I draw it along this axis, uh, whether your Gaussian is having a bigger width or whether uh, a smaller width or bigger width and maybe the core is somewhere here, right. So, the fiber core is here, but the Gaussian spreads slightly outside the core. Okay, because it is not a metallic waveguide, it is a dielectric waveguide. So, the solution has to be continuous at the boundary. Now, more the spread is less the confinement of your energy inside the core. Okay. So, more the spread is for example, if you are trying to bend the fiber, if you have energy outside in the cladding and when you are trying to bend the fiber, the chance that you will lose that energy is more if the spread is larger. Similarly, you are trying to splice two fibers let us say 
both are single moded, but with slightly different A parameter or something, right? Or slightly different numerical aperture. You would now want to find out the overlap integral between the uh, Gaussian profiles of the fundamental mode corresponding to this wavelength and then find out how much is the overlap between the two cores to find out how much is the coupling efficiency. Or let us say you made a splice, right? You so you have you have a core here and you have a slightly dissimilar core uh, here. Uh, and you made that joint because maybe different parts of the network the fiber was not very very uh, identical and you moved from 1300 to 1550 nanometer let us say right. The mode profiles are going to be lo looking different the overlap integral is going to be looking different. What do you mean by overlap integral? We are trying to figure out, figure out how much of this mode will overlap with the supported mode of this system. And that will tell me how much power I can transfer from one fiber core to the other fiber core. Okay. So, in those kind of calculations, you would want to make sure that the overlap between the modes, sorry, the overlap between the modes have to be uh, maximum. Not only just, uh, not only the overlap integral, you also want to make sure that the amount of energy confined in the core also should be maximum. Okay. And amount of energy confined in the core is decided by the width of your Gaussian. So, what are these answers now? W, width of the Gaussian for uh, for uh, V number uh, for V uh, 2.3, which is close to cutoff. Now, 2.4 is my cutoff for the higher order mode, right? So, 1300 is like close to cutoff. Um, 1550 is something which is more closer to the uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, if I take the effective index of 1550, that is going to be, okay. what would be the effective index of uh, 1550 when compared to 1310? Can you calculate that? Is that possible? Not from this information, but you should be able to decipher out that maybe we will work it out separately. But the point I am trying to make is that V is small for 1550. When V is small for 1550, the W is going to be larger. So, 1550 wavelength is going to the, the modal profile supported by the 1550 wavelength if it looks like this the modal profile supported by 1310 wavelength it is going to look like this right both are Gaussian but the spread is different because the wavelength is different okay. Now the other related concept we talked about is if you are talking if you are uh, this if you are trying to launch uh, power from a laser to a fiber. You want to find out what is the coupling efficiency. How, bet, how best can I couple my uh, power from the laser to the uh, uh, fiber? Let us say the laser gives you 1 milliwatt of power at the output of fiber. How, what is the power that I can expect theoretically? Okay. So, for that you need to calculate the overlap integral. And what is that overlap integral? It tells you what is the theoretical best coupling efficiency. It is uh, if you are taking an input Gaussian profile which is of this form and the fundamental mode and the fundamental mode is R, fundamental mode is just R which is there is no uh, azimuthal dependence it has only the radial dependence if this represents the fundamental mode which is actually represented by the Bessel function ideally, but you can also represent it with a Gaussian with a certain mode field diameter and that mode field diameter can be calculated from the Marcuse's relation. Okay. So, the overlap integral is simply 0 to infinity psi 1 psi 2 r dr because the variation is along the radius divided by square root of square of this and square of this. It is kind of normalized with respect to the uh, profile of the laser and the profile of the supported mode of the fiber. Now, you can do a Gaussian approximation and put this also as a Gaussian. So, what it simply tells us that if you want to maximize the overlap integral, you want these two functions to look identical. That is when the, it becomes maximum, right? Overlap integral becomes 1 when these two profiles are identical, which means the output of your uh, laser, right? This is your laser. Laser fundamental lasers can also have a fundamental transverse mode right so that mode 
or that profile should ideally match with the profile of the fundamental mode of the fiber that you would want to uh, launch it to. Okay. So, if you do not have suppose this profile this the, the laser gives out a wider Gaussian and the profile that you want to launch is probably a, a narrower Gaussian right what do you have to do? It means that if I try to couple wider Gaussian to a narrower Gaussian the overlap integral is going to be smaller right smaller than 1. So, what can I do? I use a lens right. So, I use a lens. So, I take the output of the laser put it through a lens and the lens focuses this way and at every cross section because a Gaussian mode is a Eigen mode of free space at every cross section you will have a Gaussian and the minimum width you will get for this Gaussian at its fo uh, uh, at its focal point right. Uh, you will have to use your lens such that at the focal point of the lens the you will get a Gaussian whose mode field diameter matches with the mode field diameter of your fiber. Now, you can do calculations uh, suppose I start with a mode field diameter w 1 my fiber has a mode field diameter w 2 what is the overlap integral going to be it is just mere substitution into this and finding out this integration and because these are exponentials these are uh, you know standard in it will come out in terms of standard integrals ok. So, those kind of calculations can be done. So, uh, to summarize we uh, calculated in detail the modes of the fiber uh, we calculated what are the conditions for fundamental mode higher order mode how many modes exist and so on. But once I get into the domain of single mode fiber which is in a telecom system long distance communication we always have a single mode fiber what is interesting to us is only the fundamental mode because it is a single mode fiber and then once I have the fundamental mode what I need to remember is that for different wavelengths the mode sizes are different and so the way I couple light into the fiber is going to be slightly different the coupling efficiency at two different wavelengths could be different because the mode sizes are going to be different. And you can also start calculating things like you know what if I have an offset between two fibers when I do make a splice there is an offset. Uh, when you did splice in the lab you did not some of you did not get a 0 dB loss and probably there was an offset of course the machine was automatic alignment and so on, but suppose there was an offset there. Then I can actually calculate how much is the overlap between this mode and this mode considering this offset. I just have to replace the center it is as if my center got replaced by a certain uh, you know value. So, all those calculations become much easier once we get into the uh, single mode fiber domain and understand that it is just represented as a Gaussian ok. Uh, we are not going to be talking about modes of a graded index fiber because you can do the same analysis what we did for step index fiber you could do it for graded index fiber. It is no more complicated than step index fiber please do not think that because the profile is uh, you know not high and low or a step profile it is a graded profile. The differential equation uh, the form instead of being a Bessel differential equation it will turn out that those differential equation are uh, Hermite differential equations. So, you will ha also have a series solution you will have Hermite Gauss functions as the solutions and they form they have a certain form just like Bessel functions had a certain form you had Hermite functions uh, as the form of the solutions for that. But the most interesting thing is that uh, the fundamental mode of uh, graded index fiber guess what it will look like for a step index fiber it was J naught and J naught we said it is looking like a Gaussian. It so turns out that uh, even for a graded index fiber the fundamental mode is the fundamental Hermite H G 0 0 mode Hermite Gaussian 0 0 mode the first uh, zeroth order Hermite Gaussian function that also looks like a Gaussian right. So, whether you have a step index fiber or a graded index fiber the fundamental mode profile can be approximated as a Gaussian, but of course the mode field diameter is not this one there will be another set of empirical relation for the mode field diameter. We do not do 
uh, greater index fiber in detail simply because all the commercial installations are uh, step index fibers. We really do not have to go to greater index fibers uh, once you are in the single mode condition. Okay. So, why do we need greater index fiber at all? We will come to that, that is our next topic. Right? Uh, it is to minimize dispersion. In a multi-mode fiber, to minimize dispersion, you will need graded index fiber. So, we will come back again on that. That is our next topic. There is no RR here. It simply means I have psi 1, I have psi 2 as two profiles uh, R dr integral divided by square root of psi 1 square. In fact, I, I should uh, well mod psi 1 square R dr. Idea. If I have 2 psi 1 psi 2, I mean psi 1 and psi 2 as 2 uh, profiles that I am trying to find the overlap of. And because it is uh, eta, I think this should be psi 2 conjugate, so that it becomes a real number if it is a complex number, if psi is a complex. And uh, mode of a fiber you know is a complex number because you get uh, uh, fundamental mode is not, 